Last week I made a video in which I discussed why Enbridge, ticker symbol ENB, is currently my favorite energy stock. Its future prospects along with their consistent dividend growth were two of the main reasons why I like Enbridge as much as I do. But after I released that video, I got a flood of comments from people wondering how Enbridge compares to others in their same sector. And the truth is, there are some energy companies out there that do have good advantages in areas that Enbridge doesn't. So at the request of both comments left on the video, as well as some requests on our Patreon, I'm going to compare Enbridge to a few other companies that are in the same business as they are. The two companies I got the most requests to compare Enbridge to were Enterprise Product Partners, ticker symbol EPD, and Energy Transfer, ticker symbol ET. All three companies are involved in providing midstream energy services throughout North America, and they have vast pipeline channels. While there are a lot of things we can compare these companies to, given the nature of this channel, we're going to be comparing these stocks based upon their suitability for dividend investors. We're going to look at some of the service information for these stocks, starting with dividend yield, dividend growth, and taxation, and move deeper into how each company is expected to do in the future. So with that being said, let's get going. For starters, Enterprise Product Partners provides midstream energy services to producers and consumers of natural gas, natural gas liquids, crude oil, petrochemicals, and refined products. The company operates through four segments, which are NGL pipelines and services, crude oil pipelines and services, natural gas pipelines and services, and petrochemicals and refined product services. They've been around since 1968, and they're based out of Texas. Energy Transfer owns and operates approximately 11,600 miles of natural gas transportation pipeline and three natural gas storage facilities in Texas. They also sell natural gas to electric utilities, independent power plants, and industrial end users. They were formed in 1996 and they're also based out of Texas. Enbridge operates as an energy infrastructure company and operates through five segments. Those would be liquids pipelines, gas transmission and midstream, gas distribution and storage, renewable power energy, and energy services. Enbridge was formed in 1949 and they're based out of Calgary. Now that we've introduced each company, let's start with the comparison. We'll start by looking at the current dividend yield. As of the making of this video, Enbridge currently offers a dividend yield of 7.11%, Enterprise Products currently has a yield of 7.52%, and Energy Transfer has a yield of 9.47%. Even though none of these stocks pay monthly dividends, all of them still offer massive yields. Because Enbridge is a Canadian company, if you're in the US, the dividends change each quarter because of the currency changes. But the clear winner in terms of the current highest yield would have to be energy transfer. Let's now look at the dividend performance for these stocks, specifically dividend growth. Looking at the 5-year dividend growth rate, Enbridge currently has a 5-year growth rate of 5.45% according to Seeking Alpha. They've been able to grow their dividends every year for 28 years and counting, and they tout having a safer business model with more predictable cash flow. Enterprise Products currently has a 5-year growth rate of 2.63%. Just like Enbridge, this company also has a long history of consistently growing their dividend. According to their website, EPD has grown their dividend every year for 24 years and counting. This would almost make them a dividend aristocrat. Energy Transfer has a 5-year dividend growth rate of minus 1.43%. In 2020, this stock suffered a 50% dividend cut, going from about $0.30 cents per share to $0.15 cents per share. It remained at that same amount until last year when the company began growing it again. Today, Energy Transfer completely restored their dividend amount to what it used to be before the cut. If we look at their dividend distribution history before 2020, we can see that ET's also had a long history of growing their dividend, but it's been less consistent. You can see they've had some years where they didn't increase it at all. So with that in mind, the winner in terms of dividend growth would have to be Enbridge in this case. Enterprise Products is also a solid pick in this area as well, but they just don't match Enbridge in terms of growth rate or how many years they've been able to consistently grow their dividends. Now that we've looked at current dividend yield, dividend growth, and the number of dividend increases, let's now analyze the payout ratio for each company. This part isn't going to be as straightforward as it might seem because these stocks report different metrics when it comes to their payout ratios. If you look at Enbridge for example, most stock websites will say that their payout ratio currently exceeds 100%, but this is incorrect because Seeking Alpha and all these financial sites look at the wrong numbers when it comes to reporting their payout ratio. With these stocks, you don't use the normal formula for calculating their payout ratio, which is dividends per share divided by earnings per share, but instead you go on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll start by taking a look at Enbridge. As of first quarter 2023, their stock paid an 88.75% dividend per share. Their distributable cash flow per share for that quarter was $1.57. This gives their stock a payout ratio of roughly 56.5%, which is comfortable. With Enterprise Products, they use net cash flows provided by Operating Activities, or CFFO, to calculate their payout ratio. In their most recent investor presentation, their stock has a payout ratio of 55%, which just barely beats out Enbridge in terms of safety. For energy transfer, the company reported distributable cash flow of $2.01 billion and they had excess cash flow after distributions of $965 million. Based on this, if they had $2.01 billion in DCF and they paid $1.045 billion in dividends, this would give them a payout ratio of 51.99%. This puts ET in first place over ENB and EPD. 
but all three of these stocks have a payout ratio of less than 60%, which I'd consider pretty good. I know this would be considered higher than average for a typical dividend stock, like say a consumer staple, but most energy and utility stocks pay higher dividends on average. From what I could find, the payout ratio for these kinds of companies are typically around 50 to 60%. When it comes to taxes with these dividends, all three of these stocks have special considerations to keep in mind. With Enbridge, because it's a Canadian company, a percentage of the distributions are automatically withheld by your broker. You can see that for this example, Vanguard held a percentage of the dividends the same day that they were paid. Other than that, the dividends are treated as qualified distributions as opposed to ordinary income. With Enterprise Products and Energy Transfer, they're both Master Limited Partnerships, or MLPs. These are special business structures that come with really important tax consequences that you don't see with other types of dividend stocks like REITs or BDCs. With these investments, investors receive a K-1 tax form compared to most other dividend stocks that issue a 1099 DIV. It's because the IRS considers investors in MLPs to be partners of the business as opposed to just being a shareholder. K-1 tax forms have to be included when you do your taxes at the end of the year and they're known for being very difficult for people who like to file their own taxes. If you use software like TurboTax or have a tax expert do your taxes, then it's not a big issue. But both options will cost more if you give them a K-1 to deal with. It might even be worse specifically for energy transfer, because according to their website, they send investors both a K-1 along with a K-3. K-3 forms are for MLPs that earn revenue from international operations. These appear to be brand new forms that I personally don't have any experience with, so I'm not entirely sure what the implications of these forms are. But looking them over on the IRS's website, they definitely don't look pretty. It's for these reasons that even though Canadian withholding is automatically applied to Enbridge's dividends, I just consider it to be a more tax-friendly investment because Enbridge is not a master limited partnership. You get a typical 1099 DIV with this stock just like most other dividend stocks. Finally, let's look at the overall total return for each stock over the last 20 years. Both Enbridge and Enterprise products have been trading for longer than 20 years, but the dividend calculator that I typically use doesn't go back much further than this. Energy transfer has only been trading since 2006, which was 17 years ago, so that'll need to be taken into consideration. We'll start with Enbridge. You can see over the last two decades, their stock has seen a total return of 827.56%. That comes out to an average annual return of 11.78% per year. With Enterprise products, they've also done quite well, but not as good as Enbridge. Their stock has seen a total return of 705.82% and an average annual return of roughly 10.99%. For energy transfer, again, it's a little unfair because they've only been around for 17 years so far. We can see it's been a very lackluster investment since their IPO. Had you invested $10,000 into ET back when it first launched, you'd only be looking at a total return of 83.14%, or roughly 3.53% per year. In the end, I think all three of these stocks do have potential going forward, but for the sake of this comparison, the winner in this case would have to be Enbridge. But I think all three of these investments do offer features that some of the others don't. For example, Enbridge has offered more dividend growth and it's a lot easier to manage the tax situation. Energy Transfer does have the highest current yield as of right now and they do have a slightly better dividend coverage percentage. It's just unfortunate that up to this point at least, Energy Transfer hasn't been able to provide investors with a good return. Enterprise Products kinda has a mixture of both in that they've had a good length of dividend increases and it currently has a higher yield than Enbridge, but it's definitely not as tax friendly. I couldn't find if Enterprise Products currently issues a K3 tax form or if that's just an energy transfer thing. If they don't, then that would make it a better investment in regards to simplicity. In my opinion, I'm just a big fan of the simplicity of the tax situation and the better dividend growth. To me, these are some of the most important things that I like, and like I said, maybe energy transfer might be more appealing to you if you're currently in the pursuit of the highest yield. But in the end, I'm gonna have to go with ENB on this one. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you're interested, feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll find an Excel sheet of all of my holdings updated monthly. Plus, it'll give you access to our Discord channel where we discuss higher yielding types of investments. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, then feel free to hit that like button below and click subscribe if you want to see higher yielding investing strategy content. Again, thank you all so much for watching today's video and until next time, take care.